Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 27, where you email me any questions, comments, suggestions to msargent23 at comcast.net. If I can't read them on Strange World because I get a lot of calls, I will read them on this show, if they're interesting enough anyway. So everybody should know the drill by now. Let's get right to it. First email is from Flat Earth Grandma. All right. Hi, Mark. Please do not use my name. Not ready for the fallout yet. My immediate family is on board with Flat Earth, except my youngest son, age 33. I like what you did there with 33. He definitely has cognitive dissonance. He will not even look at the evidence. He has a friend from school age that he has stayed in touch with. This friend is a highly intelligent person who has told him that he has seen the curve of the earth from a military transport plane at 33,000 feet up. Like in the second 33, nice. Is this a real email? Not from a window of the plane, but from the open back door. Is this possible? Can you even see the curve from 33,000 feet? What could I tell this friend? Thanks, Flat Earth Grandma. Uh, yeah, when anyone ever says that to me, I send them the same video, and you know, there's multiple videos out there, but I send them one where the the weather balloon is at 121,000 feet, and there's obviously not a the slightest bit of curvature whatsoever. And if there's no curvature at 120,000 feet, then what are people saying they see at 33,000 feet or at the top of a mountain? Or some people have literally told me they've seen a, a curvature from the beach, and they cannot. And don't don't think that they're they're under some sort of spell. They want to see the curve. That's the big thing. We're told that there's a curve there. Same thing with the pilots. The pilots who are at thirty to forty thousand feet, they all say the same thing. It's like we we see a flat horizon, a completely flat horizon when we're especially if we're in the the cockpit. But we're told that we are you know that we're, we're living on a, on a globe a ball a sphere so it plays with your mind it's a, look up the, the george orwell thing where you know the five lights versus four four lights argument if you're told enough times if it's repeated to you enough times your mind is going to want to see it and they can't there isn't again so anybody ever sends that to me and the challenge i still put out to anyone including this person here a flat earth grandma is anyone who thinks they see the curve Take a picture of it, put it on your laptop or your, your PC or whatever at home, and take, put a straight, straight edge up to it and tell me if the curve's still there. If it is still there, then send me a, a, an email, and include it in the email, and I will quit Flat Earth. And it's, it, we're, you know, two, Flat Earth Clues is two years old now. Nobody has ever sent a picture of a, of a, of a curved Earth to me. Can't be done. Next email is from Danny. Mark, keep up the good work, and you are the one who woke me up with your Flat Earth Clues, and I can't thank you enough. Can you please name me the song that you typically play at the halfway point, like 53 minutes to 54 minutes? Uh, and he mentions Strange World number 94, SpaceX, Kyrie Irving, and Flat Earth. Regards, Danny, and I did send him a copy of that. That was done by Chip Baker. Guy, he also did the track for the beginning of the show where what he does is he does kind of a musical mashup where he takes a track and then he intersplices some movie quotes into it. The The first track he did for me was from the 70s movie about street gangs in New York. It was called The Warriors. And the clip that this guy's talking about that I play at the halfway point of my show when you're coming back in from, from the break is taken all the all the sound bites are from stanley kubrick's dr strangelove which is a fantastic movie i recommend that to anybody so thank you danny for asking about that that's awesome this one's called flat indeed mark i've been watching some of your videos very well done my first look at flat earth was simply for my own entertainment but the evidence was too convincing to overlook. I couldn't stop. The next few weeks, I felt like someone had stuck a blender in my head and scrambled my brain. I had to throw all my education away and start over. My whole life, I was confused about Polaris being visible year-round and possible in an orbiting globe. One, point on uh, two, February 23rd, 2017, I was flying from L.A. to Atlanta. To my surprise, no chemtrails. Leaving L.A. at 7.30 a.m. with clear skies on a wino seat, wino, wino, window seat, man, you gotta watch your spell checker, 
Our route follows I-40 eastward. I watch the horizon flat. As passing Albuquerque, New Mexico, I notice the snow-capped mountains just east. I watch the mountains, expecting them to disappear after a few minutes. To my surprise, they did not disappear. I continued to watch as the sun was getting higher and higher, and the mountains remained visible until just prior to going over Oklahoma City. My best estimate is 475 to 500 miles before coming into a solid cloud bank, obscuring the ground, then my view of the mountains, probably of Elephant Butte, flying at 32,000 feet or six miles up. The mountains should have been 70 miles over the horizon after subtracting altitude. I was amazed. I had never been able to see anything over 200 miles before. I know my geography of the United States very well, having driven over 3 million miles. Really driven 3 million miles? That's amazing. Two, time. If we travel around the sun once a year, our clocks would be six hours off every three months. I have not heard you mention this in your videos. I picked that picked up that on another. Three, Pikes Peak. At the junction of United States 287 and Colorado Highway 99, the sign reads Colorado Springs 99 miles. Pikes Peak is very easily seen. Traveling west an additional 10 miles, the whole mountain is visible to the base. This morning, traveling east on I-70, just west of Lyman, Colorado, the sign reads Denver 100 miles. Pikes Peak again visible. Within five miles westward, travel the whole mountain again visible to the base. Funny, my flight from LA to Atlanta was a return from a wedding and honeymoon in Maui. I tried to tell my newlywed wife about Flat Earth now. She thinks I'm cuckoo. I don't talk to her about this anymore. Thanks for reading this, Howard Hackett. Great name, great email. Thank you for making all those points. That's awesome. This one's called Phone. Phone? And it is an image that I had not seen before. It was just, oh, it's his background. So he used the Gleason's map of the world. That is now the background on his cell phone. That's awesome, man. And also awesome that you have five bars and your battery life is at 31%. That's great. This one's called Gap Theory Pre- Adamic race and floods. Mark, just listen to this show, Flat Earth Clues Interview 101, Spike Paranormal. Good stuff. Thank you. You mentioned your belief that there were other civilizations before ours and that there may be remnants of those civilizations, people, still here. You spoke a little of this possibility of hollow earth and even UFOs. Do you know that all this is in the Bible, I am guessing? For instance, and this is huge and very seldom taught by any Bible scholar, seminary, etc., that there is a huge gap of time between the two, first two verses of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2. Yeah, I, I knew this, actually. It is known as the gap theory, but to those of us that have researched it deeply, and in the Hebrew, call it the gap fact. This is all based in other scripture that clearly explains that God does not make junk and the void mentioned in verse 2, right after God creating the heavens and the earth in verse 1, well, something happened to make good and wonderful creation to become void. That is essentially what is going on. Hold on to your hat, though. It goes deeper. Did you know that there are two creations? Genesis chapter 1 is the first. Then we have another in Genesis chapter 2. This, again, is glossed over by mainstream preachers and theologians. The order of creation is different. Lots of things different between those two chapters. I would need 10 pages to explain it all. And we're, oh, he doesn't actually list 10 pages. Do you know the Bible talks of other floods besides the whole Earth's flood in Noah's time? At least two more and possibly even three localized but still devastating. These floods occurred during the gap period due to the wickedness of what people call sixth day man or pre-Adamic man. Oh, I get it, Adam man, Adamic. If you count the generations going back to Adam, we get roughly 6,000 years, but no accounting is made for the gap time, which is a minimum many believe to be an additional 4,000 years and up to 10,000 years. Obviously, since I believe in the, in the scriptures, I do not agree with the whole millions and billions of years theory, but a first and second creation and a whole other race of humans before Adam does answer some interesting questions for me. Just thought I would throw this out to you just as a general FYI. P.S. I believe in UFOs, even though there are only a few references to them in Scripture, but still it is there. My theory based on Scripture is what that they are interdimensional beings and not of the friendly ET kind. P.S.S. 
The Earth does have hollow portions, many different types and areas with different things in those areas. This is straight out of Scripture. Scripture even says a lot of very evil things are coming up out of the Earth during the end of days. Giants, huge scorpion types, creatures, and even the beast. Hey, brother, I know it sounds crazy, but that's what it says. Thanks, John. Cool. Interesting stuff. Not going to discount any of it because, well, I'm a flat earther. This one's called Wendy's Order. I think I included this in one of the, some of the slideshows. Hey, Mark, it's flat Louisiana here. That's from the license plate. It's flat. And, and by the way, thank you to the four more license plates I got since I just released the flat earth license plate connection. I've also got Connecticut, New Mexico, Indiana, and Kentucky. They all came in. Three of them were it's flat, and one of them I, is O space K3 RV, which stands for zero curve. Clever. Anyway, uh, I went to a local Wendy's and noticed they were displaying people's name after paying for their order. I gave them the name Flat Earth. She didn't want to put it on there at first, but I talked her into it. Still waiting on my plate. Lame. And, and he sent the, uh, the screenshots of his Wendy's order. Uh, and I won't link it up here, but you, you'll probably see it in the slideshow. So yeah, great stuff. This one's just called Flat. Mark, I still had a question regarding the vacuum of space. What separates our atmosphere from the vacuum of space? And how does NASA explain that I've never heard anyone talk? interesting sentence structure but yeah you're absolutely right They're, they don't explain it the, the 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 vacuum of space which is supposed to be very very powerful and yet our atmosphere which has this kind of rough bleeding edge out into the vacuum of space why doesn't the vacuum of space just rip the entire atmosphere off you can't tell me the gravity's countering that force of the vacuum of space are it really is that is that what's happening Including the biggest government shill of them all Neil deGrasse if you could sir get back to me at your early, earliest convenience have a swell day yeah, they, they don't have an explanation for it. They, they can only say, well, the atmosphere is still here. Therefore, the vacuum of space obviously doesn't have that much of an effect on it. And, and my argument would be, or it's a compressed system that the atmosphere is inside a dome, inside a structure. So the atmosphere can't go anywhere and there is no vacuum of space. So you know, they'll go the other way. It's like, well, no, no, no there is space. And, you know, whatever. Hi, Mark. Greetings from, oh, I'm sorry, this email is called Spreading the Word. Hi, Mark. Greetings from Toronto, Canada. I want to thank you for your hard work on Flat Earth. You and some other nice people out there have opened my eyes. I, too, laughed when I first heard of Flat Earth. After doing my own experiments and research, I could not turn back, and now I believe that we live on a Flat Earth under an enclosed environment. Besides sharing my information on and YouTube, the attached image is how I have started spreading the word. Feel free to use it in your videos as other proof and encouragement to the others. Keep up the great work. Thank you again for opening my eyes. Take care and God bless. Sincerely, Farah Siami. F-A-R-A-S-I-A-M-I. -A -A awesome. And what is the image? I gotta, I gotta actually look at this thing for a second. Oh, she started running in on money. She started doing flatter stamps on all of Canadian money. And people have been doing that with American stuff already in U.S. dollars. Great way, actually, even though cash isn't as prevalent as it was even 20 years ago. Putting putting stuff on money because money changes hands quite a bit before its lifespan finally extinguishes. Yeah, it's a great idea. Thank you for, for doing that. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Please send me the interview. Thanks for all your hard work, Mark. Tina Marie. Yeah, if anyone wants, as you know, the only copyright strike I ever got, and I had it overturned immediately because it didn't actually happen, and there's certain irony in this. I put up all the interviews. Any, any interview that, I, that I've done, I'll put up on YouTube with the exception of one, which is the Coast to Coast interview. They made me sign a waiver stating two things. One, that I couldn't reproduce my interview on YouTube. And two, they could take my interview and do anything they wanted with it, including chopping it up and, and editing it editing it any way they pl uh, chose. So what happened was I put up a placeholder for the video and I just, it was just me talking like, like I'm talking to you right now and said, uh, well, I did an interview on Coast to Coast, can't put it up. You guys want it. You're gonna have to either go to Coast to Coast website or find somebody else that has it. And the, whatever intern was working for them in 2017, because this interview had been up for 18 months, pushing two years, they looked at the title of the video, didn't notice it was it was on 60 seconds long, just me saying exactly what I just said there, 
and they copyrights struck it and it was really are you kidding me the only video the only interview i don't put up and that's the one i get struck for so i countered it and they they retracted which was fine but because of that if anyone wants is like believe in karma if anyone wants the actual coast to coast interview all you have to do is email me say hey mark i want the coast to coast interview and i will shoot it to you because i think it's about 75 megs so i can't email it to you but i'll send it through we transfer and you can listen to it. It's not bad. It's one of my early ones. I was on Coast to Coast within three months after doing The Clues, which was still mind-boggling to me. And, and George Norrie let me do the entire show and didn't shut me down and didn't ridicule me. He actually defended me. And now now that it's become popular, he's using his it, my interview as a reference point. It's like, yeah, we actually did a show on Flat Earth. It's like, lucky. Lucky guy. All right, this one's called... Proving Flat Earth in a New World. Mark, I've been watching your videos for about a week, and already I am a firm believer that the word world is indeed flat. I have come up with an interesting way to prove this theory to everyone without any doubt. I'd love to discuss this with you. Please give me a shout back when you can. Best regards, Caleb. And if I'm not mistaken, I actually wrote him back, and he has not let me know what's going on. Hopefully nothing happened to him. I, when somebody says that, you know, I've heard that sort of thing before. This one's called NDT, an equation to ponder. Please use on your show. This is from Wayne. Research, I'm sorry, the world divided by research times thought equals flat truth. It's hmm, good. I listen to your show as well as Rob Skiba and Zen Garcia. I'm also going to be on the Zen Garcia show probably by the time, well, I might have this thing actually up by the time this airs. I'm going to be on Zen's show in three hours from now. Might have this up by then My, on TFR. My life has changed for the better. I now have peace and calm for I know God. Now, since the truth is cascading over the earth, smooshing the false global facade to a flat disk of truth. I think that's the first time I've ever used the word smooshing. It's kind of like, like smooshing a bug, which my girlfriend doesn't like me to do. She doesn't like, like killing anything. This one's called satellite photos. Mark, seeing how it is claimed there are no satellites up there, how will satellite phones work? Probably through the old Loran system. That's how I'd use them. Cell phone towers, underwater cables. Uh, modified AWOC planes, maybe even balloons, maybe even the NASA balloons. Again, I'm not saying there aren't satellites. I'm saying that satellites, as they're described to us, are not up there. They are probably high-altitude balloons with electronic devices. And I, how long they last up there is anyone's guess. Uh, the military could probably get stuff to, to last a lot longer than civilian weather balloons. He also, I'm sorry, Jeannie also says, I was listening to Dave Hodges' Common Sense YouTube podcast, Deep State Ready to Launch Paramilitary Operations, Paul Martin interview at 15 minutes, 8 seconds in Fort Collins, Colorado. There are stacks of cases of satellite phones ready for when the phone system be, to be taken down. What say you? <laughs> nice. nice. Makes me think of Lord of the Rings. Jeannie B. from Tampa Bay, Florida. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure the satellite phones work. I've seen people with satellite phones. But they... They aren't bouncing off satellites as we know them. Whatever satellites are, are not they're not as advertised. But thank you for that. This one's from... Oh, did I already do this one? Greetings. Oh, no, she sent it twice. That was the Farah, the lady who writes on Canadian money, Flat Earth. By all means, do write on money. This one's called Need Help. Hi, Mark. We spoke over the phone some time back. I am from India. And I had a question. How do I start a flat earth discussion? I believe you or someone had a video explaining and I can't find it. Recently, I introduced flat earth to friends, showed them Dave Murphy's video first and they were okay with it. One of them found it interesting. So I asked them to check out your videos, Rob Skiba's Jaronism and Eric Dubay. Recently, I was up with a group of four friends, started about flat earth and all hell broke loose. <laughs> They started about the ship going down over the horizon and etc. I gave them an explanation about the ship going down over the horizon, the curvature argument, and the false images in NASA's website. Also informed them that the Earth is a spheroid and not round, but NASA's images show them to be round. By the way, when you say round, don't say round anymore. Use three words, ball or sphere or globe. That's, that's what you should be using. A dinner plate is round. A pizza is round. Uh, the, the tire on your car is round. 
sphere, ball, globe. Okay, that's the difference, flat versus that. Even after scrolling through NASA's website, they still believe it to be real images. Also explain to them about the gyroscope, railroad tracks, not considering the curvature, the Chicago skyline, helium balloons, flight paths, which don't make sense. The answer to it was, it's about business, etc. I guess such people are lost because, or did I start the discussion incorrect? Anyways, whether it's flat or whether whatever shape right now, I just can't buy the globe model. Have a great Sunday. Regards, Girish Bahatia, G-I-R-I-S-H-B-H-A-T-I-A, from India. And no, you didn't start the discussion wrong. You're not going to be able to convince people in an hour or two or over dinner or over coffee. And I don't care if they're family members or lifelong friends. In fact, it'll probably be worse if they are because then they'll look at you and say, I don't even know this person. Just put the seed in their head. All Come at them sideways. And of course, the biggest thing of all, size up who you're talking to. If they're into conspiracies, then maybe bring it up to them. But be gentle how you do it. If they are not into conspiracies at all, you are going to have a really, really tough time. Because especially if, if they believe in everything, if they believe everything mainstream news tells them, then I wouldn't necessarily bring up Flat Earth that you even buy it. Just bring it up as that crazy thing you saw on YouTube. That's the easiest way. Look, I saw something nutty on YouTube. These people are talking about Flat Earth. And now, since there's mainstream references to it, you could bring up the rapper B.O.B. You could bring up Kyrie Irving. You could bring up Joe Rogan. You could bring up even Howard Stern recently that you heard it on. All these different di different things. Just say, look, I heard it on this show. What do you think? And that'll, that'll get you there. This one's called Flat Earth Going Mainstream. If I can click on it. Mark, it seems Flat Earth is going mainstream, and I initially thought that was great. But if Hollywood starts making movies about it, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. That I'm afraid it, that will make people even less likely to believe or look into it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing movies and shows being made about it to do just that. Maybe Alex Proyas will make a Flat Earth movie. He made Dark City and Gods of Egypt, both of which have Flat Earth planes in them. Speaking of Dark City, what do you think of the possibility that our world is being run somewhat like the one in Dark City? That is actually the conclusion I'm reaching. That's from K. Uh, last question first. Dark City, eh, maybe, kind of. I mean, there's. It's Dark City was on on such a small scale. I mean, it was a very small city in comparison to this thing. Are there things underground? Oh yeah, I have no doubt that there's there's civilizations underground. Do they run everything? Eh, it might be more of an automated system. But when it comes to Hollywood making movies and television shows, look, I'm right there on the edge of this where I've talked to producers that want to turn it into television shows and or documentaries. And they don't know how to do it yet because they're scared of the topic. No, no different than Alex Jones. You want, you want to know why Hollywood's having a hard time getting into this? Look at what Alex Jones has done recently. He has bobbed and weaved and dodged and trying to get away from this thing. He does not want it to, because people are scared that if you even discuss the topic, you're going to be alienated from your subscribers. And I've, you see the comments on, on all the big channels. Like, I cannot believe you're even, you're even entertaining this idea. And people are afraid of, of being labeled along those lines. Like, oh, I'm not a flat earther. Anyway, this one's called Flat Earth Inquiry. Hi there, I saw your documentary on YouTube. Any res research material you can suggest? A.L. Knox. Well, A.L., and I think I sent this to him as well. Uh, would you, if you email me a question like that, I'll generally send you a link because who knows if you're going to listen to the Q&A show which is anyone that's new to this, anyone's going down this road for the first time, or if you want to recommend it to somebody that's brand new, there is a playlist on my channel called Flat Earth um, for New People, uh, Flat Earth Shortlist for New People. And you can go there, and, and there's a bunch of videos ranging from five minutes long to two hours long from, from various people all over the Flat Earth community. And I try to update it on a, on a regular basis. There's about 20-something there. Just pick one or two of those. I guarantee you, if they start out small there, and the first four or five, are really, they're long, but they're really, really good, and they give a great summary. So that's where I would start people on, to just get the, the basic information. And then once, once it's in their head, they're not going to get rid of it, and they're not going to sleep for a long time. So thanks for that. This one's called Flat Earth Math Problems. This one's from Kevin. 
Hi Mark, I was just sitting here and I just thought of the curvature math problems we discussed recently. Something keeps niggling me. Niggling? K-N-I-G-G-L-I-N-G. -I 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 Real word? I don't know. The math is off by a factor of two. When I run the flat earth curvature math to its furthest limit, 3959 miles, which is the radius of the earth, as we are told by science, the math doesn't check. So for instance, 3959 miles times itself times 8 inches equals 125 million inches divided by 12, which is 10 million feet, which is uh, 1979 miles. Oh, divide by miles. Yeah. Is that right? This should, should check out to be 3959, not 1979. 1979 times 2 is 3958, almost exactly a factor of 2. So next I decided to try some trial and error math, and I multiplied the 8 in the curvature math by 2, a factor of 2, therefore making the 8 a 16. So new test formula being miles squared times 16. Lo and behold, the math now checks out. So... 3959 times itself times 16 inches equals 250 million inches divided by 12, 20 million feet divided by 5280 per mile is 3958, the radius of the Earth. Granted, it's off by 0.025%. I think it may be on to some, I may be on to something here, and the math seems to agree. What that something is, I'm not exactly sure. Either the curvature formula is incorrect, and I've I've realized it, or the formula is correct, and I've just made a simple math mistake, or the formula is incorrect, and my assessment of why is wrong. Log logically speaking, one of these three must be correct. As my logic and the math seem to agree, I must go with option three. The math is wrong, and I think I figured out how and where. I think, as I originally pointed out, the variable of eight must be wrong. If you double the eight and make it 16, all the math works forwards and backwards, and like what happens with an eight in the formula. I'm by no means a math genius, nor do I have any math degrees, so I expect someone might point out some simple mistakes I'm making here and let me know where I went wrong, but I think I'm right on this one, so I'm curious to see what comes of it. Thanks again, Kevin Cuss. And you guys, feel free to email him directly because I don't want to be the middleman here, and but I'll explain this to you. So his email address is kevkuss, K-E-V-K-U-S-S -S, at hotmail.com. And what he's really talking about here is a math problem, which is mainstream science says the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile squared. But he says when you get up to a certain level, I remember talking to this guy on the phone. He, he called and was somewhat concerned about this. He goes, when you get up to a certain level, it doesn't pan out anymore. It's, it seems to really get exaggerated to the point where he's saying that, look, when you get up over a couple thousand miles, it only works when it's like 16 inches per mile squared. So can anyone check this out? Double it, you know, look at the scale and, and see if there's something wrong because I'd love to know why mainstream science has been saying eight inches per mile squared when in fact it should be more. If, if 39.59, basically, you know where I'm going at, right? So try it with 16 inches times the mileage squared and see what happens. See if it, if it finally pans out to 39.59 and why why we keep looking at it at eight inches. So is he right, is he wrong? Please, somebody test it for me. Let me know. Love to hear it. This one's called Flat Earth Conference. Hey Mark, just wanna say massive thanks to you for opening my eyes on the Flat Earth and was just wondering whether the Flat Earth Conference was open to the public or invite only. I'm from Birmingham, England and would love to come. Thanks, sincerely, Kurt Miles. Uh, Kurt, no. Uh, you're from England, English people are not allowed, or Scottish or Irish, or basically anyone over, no, can't, totally kidding. It's, yeah, it's absolutely invite, I love people international. In fact, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be international people showing up at this thing. So, no, it's not invite only, go to fe2017.com. You guys want to check out the first Flat Earth Conference in 500 years? Well, at least, I know they kind of did one in Europe, but this one, I think, is a little more formal and, and, uh, and put together. Not knocking what you guys did over there in Europe. But this last year, but this one should be a real bang up thing. So check it out. Go to fe2017.com. I'm going to be a speaker at the first luncheon. I'm also going to be hosting the Flat Earth Awards show with Patricia Steer, the last event over the two day thing. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people. I'm doing a promo every single week on my channel. So please, by all means, it's going to be November 9th and 10th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Again, you can just type in Flat Earth Conference into YouTube and you'll find all the information. 
and then of course if you want if you're doing it from youtube otherwise definitely go to the website which is fe2017.com and they will give you every painstaking detail about it next one is from i don't know who it's from but it says watch flat earth the sun can't be 93 million miles away part one of two on youtube hi mark it's alma I paid attention to the Flat Earth in December of 2015. I have emailed you once and was so excited when you read my email. Smiley faces. Today I came upon this video. I think the guy does a great job in explaining that the distance of the sun is not what we are told. He has other good videos. I had not heard of Dr. Zach before, but I think we should promote his channel. What do you think? Maybe you already did, and I was not aware. Thanks, and keep up the good work. See you at the conference. See? There's a person going to the conference right there. Alma Ortega. Awesome. That's great. This one's called Ultima Online Screenshot. <laughs> Love gamers. Love them. That reminds me, I got to check my Warcraft garrison. This, uh, hey, Mark, I have been wanting to send this for a while. A few weeks ago, someone called into your show and started talking video games and mentioned Ultima Online. I used to play the paid server back in high school and then moved to uh, World of Warcraft when I went into the Marines after a friend convinced me to play with him. A little over a year ago, I found a free-to-play server called Ultima Online Forever, and I'm just sucked back in completely. Not that you need to include this picture in your slideshow at all, but I noticed there was a dash of clans... Clash of Clans one, I believe, so I figured it may make the cut, or at least you would find some enjoyment in it. So here is my house, and one of my characters, rightly named NASA Lies. <laughs> Enjoy. That's great. And let me see if I remember this picture. Character named NASA Lies. I don't think I can use it in the slideshow because it's really small, but I, I love it. So thank you very much, uh, William, for sending that. That's great. This one's called I'm a Flat Earth Noob. Okay. In one of your videos, you mentioned the wiring inside the ISS didn't Apollo 1 have bad wiring and catch fire. I'm not even an electrician, and I personally think the ISS is not safe at all. It looks like a random set designer just randomly hung a bunch of wires on the wall. I'm still a bit of a skeptic about the flat earth, but I have more hopes of the ISS not being real than the flat earth. Well, let's start. Once you start breaking down Apollo and the entire NASA space program, including ISS, you will get there. Trust me. This one's called Geocentric Videos on YouTube. Mark, God bless you. I hope you and yours are doing well. Have you ever watched any geocentric videos on YouTube? The Geocentric Society in Cleveland, Ohio has some that are eye-opening, and I was wondering if you could modify your FE position at all if you adopted the geocentric model. God bless Thomas. And for those of you who have not remembered this, the geocentric model says that there still is a solar system and a universe, but that Earth is the center of it. And that literally everything revolves around us. No, my position is not going to really change because if that's the case, then you don't need real space. Remember, if 99.999999% of our population cannot even go above commercial airline height. If you can fake space, that's what you use. Use a fake space. No different than a planetarium. That's that's what you do. You don't need a giant solar system to pull this thing off. You don't need to waste all that area. I was going to say space again. You don't need to. So, no. I mean, the geocentric model is close. It's close. But, no, I, I don't think that uh, it's, it's, it's close enough. But thank you for, for offering. I'm not going to shoot it down. I mean, geocentric model, hey, it's great, but you don't need to. I'm not saying that, that God was lazy. I'm, I'm saying that God was very efficient. You, you create a, a planetarium, a domed structure, and then you simulate space. Because if everybody buys the illusion, you go with the illusion. Plain, plain and simple. This one's called Flat Earth Drawing. Hey, Mark, just want to send you this drawing. Feel free to use it in any slideshows. Uh, for your videos, just let me know if you do put it in so I can watch for it. I better grab that one, actually. Kind of random how I received this drawing. I quit smoking and I now vape. And the company Vape Wild that I order from allows customers to request drawings from the staff with their orders. Pretty awesome feature, I think. So I requested recently for somebody to draw me a flat earth, and this is what I got. 
I thought it was pretty funny and interesting. My husband and I grew up in western Washington and are currently located in Granite Falls, east of Everett. We frequently listen to your YouTube videos along with other flat earth broadcasters on YouTube. We enjoy your videos a lot. Keep up the great work. Melissa and Dominique. Very interesting that you would bring up Granite Falls, which is east of Everett. Because when I was going to high school, and I was in a single A high school, if you guys know what single, double, and triple A is, we the, one of the other single A schools that we played in our league was Granite Falls. So I, I know Granite Falls. I did We did road games there for football and basketball. I was a big basketball guy. So we played Granite Falls and Sultan and Tolt, Kings Garden, Bellevue Christian. Oh, wow. Memories. Huh. Anyway, good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to save, save the picture that you sent me for that. This next one's called Sextant. Mark, thanks for talking with me today. If you get a verified local to Earth on a single star or sun, I suggest for the sake of undeniability, provable facts. First, establish my theory. Then I get at least five positions, as I discussed with you, two persons at each lo location for honest verification and coordinates and method of testing. One person at each location be a solid scientific globe believer and the other a serious flat earther, each taking a record of star readings, method, time, location, and elevation. This keeps both sides of an argument honest and results honest. This is a sextant test. He wants to have multiple sextant tests, star charting uh, on different places around the world. I believe this test is going to prove local sun, move star, moon stars, and firmament. The implications of this information hitting mainstream media and discrediting the entire scientific community for decades of lies and deceit will be life-changing for the entire world. I have listened to the arguments on both sides, and both are positive about their position on the matter. Only one is true, the other is a liar. If you start this once the data is processed, it must be dealt with quickly. The fun and games of the whole thing will be gone. Imagine Fox or CNN running a story. Flat Earther proves NASA lied about moon landing. <laughs> yeah. The moon is only 300 miles above Earth, the sun also. You have then put light on a lot of powerful people and corporations that have stolen trillions from the public. This will be evidence of fraud and racketeering on levels unbelievable, thrown straight in their faces in public. I suggest if the data proves local sun and moon, you publish the information with directions for everyone to download and share. For your safety, thank you, and may God bless you in this. Thanks to Eric Dubay and others. Thanks, Howard. I want this proven. I want my sanity back, my brain out of the blender. I would like to be part of this, but with or without me, please move on this. You know what? If anyone wants to email this guy, and start setting up the sextant text. Uh, sorry, sextant test. Ooh, try, that's a tough one to do. Please email this guy right away and, and see what you can. I, I, I might be able to get into it, but unfortunately I've been so busy. But if you want to kind of play around with this and set something up, you can email him at howhackett, H-O-W-H-A-C-K-E-T-T -T at yahoo.com. Name's Howard. This one's called Hubble Telescope. Starts out something like this. Mark, look at the Earth, clouds, no movement. Need to destroy the Hubble telescope myths. Thank you for your work, my friend, Nathan. And the YouTube video that he pointed me at was called Space Shuttle STS-109 Columbia Hubble Space Telescope Servicing Mission. It's published in August 2012. Great. Great stuff. This email is called Flat Earth License Plate. Shocker. The collection's getting really big, guys. I'm so happy for everybody. This one's, yeah, New Mexico. Good evening, Mark. Just wanted to let you know you're reaching all the way out here to New Mexico. Just received my new plate. Thanks for sharing the truth, Jim. And he, will, uh, it's already been added to the slideshows, and it's going to be a great addition. The April... It, the, it's getting big enough to I'm actually having to choose choose longer songs, the longer music tracks to go along with the Flat Earth license plate compilation. It's fantastic. In fact, we're, we're past the tipping point now in license plates where I think there's actually less states left than there were. I think we're way over 25 at this point. So what's this one called? Flat Earth Help. Hey, again, Mark sent the following email. <laughs> Seismic waves. Oh, do I want to read this right now? No, but I don't want to read this right this second. Sorry. 
This one's called Neil deGrasse Tyson and the Girl on the Plane. You know what? I'm going to save this one till the end. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Remember this one. Neil deGrasse Tyson and the Girl on the Plane. It's a joke. I'm saving this one. I read this one earlier. It's pretty funny. How many? How much time is left? Yeah, we still got time. This one's called Sick of That Argument. Mark, it's too big to hide. Too many people would be involved. It's one of the most annoying counter-arguments I keep hearing. People who have a vested interest in the globe model will obviously fight against it, but they're backed by thousands of people who have no vested interest that will aggressively fight without even understanding what they are defending. It's akin to a religious fanaticism. You don't need to look far for similar, similar examples in sports team Sports team supports. Rob, staying ahead of the curve. Thanks, Rob. And he's right. I get that all the time. This one's called Article About Rockefeller Antarctica. Must read. I wanted to make sure you saw this article. Sure you know how much, much of it. There's a lot of connecting dots. You can go to roguemoney.net. Stories. The story is called Antarctica, the Rockefeller Connection. It's from Mike Seal. And... I'll have to check that out when I get a chance. Antarctica, lots of weird stuff going on there. This one's called Flat Earth Novella. Somebody sent me a Flat Earth Novella, and I, I have not read it yet. I've been, I've been busy, but I will. Thanks very much, Mark. Here it is. Hope you get a chance to read at least some of the book. I'm not going to read it on here. And I look forward to hearing any suggestions you may have. All the best. Sarah Fettler. So Sarah sent me a Flat Earth Novella. And you know what? If anyone wants to email her... And, and ask for the novella, and, and who knows? It's a PDF file, not quite a meg. It's called, uh, I can't read the title right in front of me. It's, it's broken up. You can email her at 95471534 at telephonica.net, T-E-L-E-F-O-N-I-C-A.net. So it's 95471534. You can email her and ask for the novella and say you heard it on q and I, I swear I will try to read this uh, when I can. I get a lot of stuff sent to me, but it, there's only so much time in the day, especially recently. It's been super busy. This one's called Satellites and Flat Earth. It's Mark, today I had an opportunity to speak to technical support personnel with DirecTV. While resolving certain issues, I learned the conversation was being monitored for quality control. I expanded the conversation with lead-in Flat Earth clues without specifically discussing Flat Earth. Namely, I introduced the analyst to, one, the internet is not supported by satellites. Two, satellites are not what is portrayed, referencing Google Loon. I posed the question, why do we have only a nominal number of satellites in orbit? The analyst agreed that a satellite is mechanical, that it would not last for an eternity. The International Space Station is likely a weather balloon. It is unrealistic to see something 251 miles high when you can barely see an aircraft at 30,000 feet. Hmm, good point. On weather balloon cameras, you have never seen stars. The analyst expressed her belief that the stars are angels. I explained my theory that the stars are in a layer. The layer of stars is less than 100,000 feet, and the angel stars only shine downward to Earth. Hmm. The conversation, including with others likely listening in, lasted at least 15 minutes. Someone or several within the group will surely investigate, then likely discover Flat Earth. The conversation ended with the analyst asking if I had more to say. I responded yes, but that it would take hours of time. I think she will investigate. I appreciate your work. Kent Moore. Thanks, man. Awesome. What else do we got? This one's called, Please Read As Soon As Possible. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to. Mark, hello, my name is Alex. I have very exciting news. In my humble opinion, at the end of this year, I'll have an opportunity to meet face to face and talk with an astronaut by the name of Jeffrey N. Williams. So I'll be able to speak with and ask the gentleman anything I wish. I'd like to utilize this time to ask him challenging questions regarding the globe view. Currently, I have several points which I believe are key. However, I'm not yet knowledgeable enough in this area. Consequently, I'm reaching out to people that are smarter than me, or than I, for challenging ideas that I can present to him during this rare opportunity. Please get back to me at your earliest convenience. Thank you in advance, Alex. And I will respond to Alex, but if, look, if you're going to try to trip up an astronaut, it's going to be tough. 
But if you're, you're going to trip them up, try to go after the Van Allen radiation belts. That's probably one of the easiest because NASA doesn't have an answer for them. And that is, they were announced in 1959. They're super deadly, supposedly. That's what mainstream science says. But yet NASA will not tell you what shielding they use to get through the belts. Did they use lead or did they use gold? And to what extent? What, what, how, much, how much shielding was used for Apollo 8 through Apollo 17 that had to go through them? Round trips. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody died of cancer. Nobody even got cancer from radiation. So how did they make it through? And then show him, you know, if, if you have a chance, then have him go into mention the Orion trial by fire video, which is on YouTube and it's on the NASA website where they say straight up that they can't, the, the first capsules they send through the belt will be unmanned because they haven't figured out how to get through the radiation. And yet SpaceX apparently is going to do a round trip through these belts and they're not going to even explain how, how they're getting through. Amazing. This one's called, Hi, Dear Friend, Mark, my friend. My name is George Travella. I'm from Mexico City. I'm a musician, also a Christian. And in the beginning, Genesis 1, 6 through 9, Moses reveals that the firmament has waters above covering the earth dome. I have been searching flat earth for almost two years. In my conclusion, earth is flat. Also, the book of Enoch has some information. I watch your video and I will love to keep in touch with you. He sends me a video. I send you this video link. I have several videos of my music. Hope you like it. And that's awesome. Electronic symphonic epic songs of war. Huh. All right. You know what? I got to check that out. Sounds interesting. Why not, right? This one's called 2017. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Benjamin Almas, or Ben. I'm reaching out to you in a flat earth community because I'm preparing to outline several video experiments to be conducted in the summer of 2017. My main points of concern for the first video in this series will be fully tracking the satellite illusion and wireless telecom, GPS, NG, SUS, oceanic buried cable trunks and submarine cable balloons, and parabolic reflecting. This documentary will be only nuts and bolts of the apparatus that is our Earth-wide network, data, and telecom connection, all, of course, without satellite use. I am asking you because I feel with your experience on YouTube and the Flatter Circles, you might best tell me what experiments are more pertinent to the cause at this point. Myself and several of my old colleagues are planning a few experiments, and I, because of limited funding, must pick and choose which experiments we can tackle properly. If I were to list our first three potential experiments, would you please let me know what, if any, of our experiments have been done and are proven already, to your knowledge? One, laser test across 20 kilometers from microwave tower to microwave tower, each with identical uh, altitudes from at least sea level reference. Uh, two, a balloon camera multi-angle and infrared at 30,000 meters, one day launch, one night launch. Three, an IR telescope from beach and night test of visual range, a controlled boat receding to greater distances away. I don't think really any of those have been done yet. I mean, Bob tried to do the balloon. Jaron did a laser test. And Dave Murphy did a laser test, but not at 20 kilometers. And the IR telescope from the beach, though, those are all excellent. That is only the first three, but I have a feeling we're getting to the post a little late in the game with these tests. Could you possibly possibly clarify this for me? Regards, and thank you whether you can help here or whether you can't. I appreciate your ear, Ben, and I will message him back because just in case he doesn't catch this show. How much time? We got a few more we can do. This one's called UFOs. Hey, Mark, love your stuff. Flat Earth Clues woke me up along with David Weiss and ODD. Love how down to earth that dude is. You guys are awesome. I heard your take on UFOs and how they could still pretty much be here with us. Think, thinking with my tin foil hat that way, UFOs are so out of this world weird since they hover, barely make noise, and are said maybe to use magnetics or frequencies. What if our dome is a magnetic or frequency shield and whether somehow that's how they get back and forth? I don't know how magnetics or electric works so maybe it's a dumb idea i don't know but i it makes sense how they would literally pop out of our existence you know like every time you see a ufo 
But anyways, I have been a flatty for like nine months now. You guys rocked my world last summer while I was in Florida on vacation. Just flabbergasted everywhere I looked since I was in a beach. <laughs> Thanks so much for all your great work. Keep it up and keep it flat. Awesome. That's from Ernie. This one's called Young Programming from Jimmy Choo. Mark, around January, I was chaperoning my daughter's pre-kindergarten class. I'm here in Jersey, so we went to Liberty Science Center. The very first stop in the itinerary was their IMAX theater. It's all four- and five-year-olds, so you would think they would show us an animated movie, but no. He actually put like 15 O's. They put on this dumb, stupid, fake ISS footage with people floating around with socks. The kids lost interest within the first three minutes. That's how they do it. Get them while they're young. Nice. He also sent that to Patricia Steer simultaneously. This one's called Small Contribution. Let's see here. I caught your show on TFR, heard my first name. For your information, I first got a clue about two years ago while looking at my little desktop globe and asking myself, why would coast to coast flights to the west take the same amount of time going east? And then I asked everyone I came across and no one had an answer. By now, my children are flat, my wife is flat, and yours truly is flat. My son is not only flat, he is unashamed and out of the closet flat. <laughs> That's a great series of sentences right there. <laughs> he has come out with a few things I didn't know, and he doesn't obey the first law of flat club. The biggest mystery to me is not flat earth, it's all the chemtrails. I spent so much time and effort trying to research and rationalize them, but to no avail. And the ones they deny are the same ones that preach a globe earth. Thanks for taking the time to reply. Best wishes from Kentucky, William. Awesome, William. All right, how many more can I do here? How about this one? This one's from Larry. Uh, wake up call. Nope. That is a nope. Every once in a while I'll get just general conspiracy emails that people will be on a mailing list and I don't ever unsubscribe, so I just spam them. Put them in the spam folder. This one's from Pim, I think. Hey, Mark, I saw this news footage where it again states that NASA just released 100 breathtaking pictures from Pluto. The video is hilarious and clearly, again, CGI. I recall the whole is it or isn't it a planet discussion since Pluto was a potato-shaped lump of rock. And the CGI it is shown as a perfect sphere without and stars nor space debris. Keep up the good work. Hope to call in sometime during the live show. And it, I don't, I think it's, yeah, Pim Mav from the Netherlands. Get a lot of stuff from the Netherlands. That's awesome. Let's do two more. Alex Jones, Getting on Flat Earth. That's the name of this one. If I can get it to launch come on mark i contacted him a week ago or so ago and suggested he do this very type of video can't believe he did it well, we yeah, we did the, the the dinner with eddie bravo interview with alex today good or bad exposure as you always say yeah i hate to say this but you know if alex jones invites me to be on the show in any capacity even if it's audio only i'd have to do it i would have to do it just for the exposure now if he wanted me to recant anything or go down a different road, no, of course I'd turn it down. But any publicity is still publicity, plain and simple. Uh, let's do this one, and then we'll do the joke, and we'll call it we'll call it good. This one was sent to a whole bunch of people. It's called Fabric Theory and Glass Onion Theory Videos and Others. It was sent to David and Jaronism and Zeteticism and me and K-Bob. Hey, guys, just want to know if anyone wants to share mirror, mirror use of any of their current or future content, feel free. You have my full, full permission. I feel like there's a lot of really great experiments and ideas around that can help tip the scale soon. We are living in a time where powerful technology is available to everyone, and I think it's just a matter of time before some real conclusive evidence is arrived at. Some things that I think may be worth researching further. I'm doing what I can, but maybe somebody knows some experts. One, the Equator Star Trails are the two rotating circle trailer trails solely a result of wide angle lenses would be needed of course for such a wide field surely the trails at the equator should be straight lines across the skies west to east stars cannot move apart unless they're spinning discs above us two diamagnetism or similar could be used for the iss footage along with cables yeah i suppose 
three, atmosphere against a vacuum and the second law of thermodynamics must must be a killer. Would Brian Mullen be the man to look into that? And four, simultaneous photos of the moon. I'm in the UK. If someone in Europe, USA, could take a photo at the same time as me, or from my balloon even, use a protractor to determine the angle in the sky and potentially triangulate the distance. That sounds a lot like the um, uh, the sextant test. Best wishes to you all. Any experiments I can help with, I'll do what I can. And this, that was from Flat Max UK. Thanks, Max. Hopefully others chimed in on this as well. Do we have time for the joke? Yes, we do. So we'll end with a joke that was sent to me. And now that I'm, I'm kind of overselling it, I think. But it's, it's pretty interesting. So this was sent by Art. And he goes, uh, or Ab Abiyashi. So the joke goes something like this. Neil De and I think hopefully Jaron said it on his show or somebody else, but I'm going to say it anyway. Neil deGrasse Tyson was seated next to a little girl in an airplane. He turned turned to her and said, "Do you want to talk? Flights go quicker if you strike up a conversation with your fellow passenger." The little girl, who had just started to read her book, replied to the total stranger, "What would you want to talk about?" "Oh, I don't know," said Neil. "How about the vastness of space, life on other planets, why there is no God or no heaven or hell or no life after death?" He smiled smugly. Okay, she said. Those could be interesting topics, but let me ask you a question first. A horse, a cow, and a deer all eat the same stuff, grass. Yet a deer excretes little pellets, while a, while a cow turns out a flat patty, but a horse produces clumps. Why do you suppose that is? Neil, visibly surprised by the little girl's intelligence, thinks about it and says, Hmm. I have no idea. To which the little girl replies, Do you really feel qualified to discuss the vastness of space, life on other planets, God, heaven and hell, or life after death, when you don't know shit? She went back to reading her book. And with that, guys, <laughs> stay flat. <laughs>